Okay, then let's start. So, uh, last time, um, the CF Linux FS4 compatibility release, um, it's all in preparation. But as of today, there is still no release published on Bosch IO. So yeah, there is nothing to do for us. We simply have to wait until at least one release is available. Um, Terraform 1.4, yeah, this is our most uh, pressing topic at the moment. Um, let's first do the easy stuff and then I come to the Terraform migration state. Um, cats tests run quite stable, so the fix in the Go router uh, has definitely improved the situation. Um, so right now there's no more, no need for any further action. Uh, Kubernetes update, I have not yet looked into that, that will come soon. Um, cut a major cats release after a major CF deployment release. I've added a short hint in the release wiki. So next time someone cuts an incompatible CF deployment release, he or she is reminded to check the cats uh, release too. Uh, the Zoom links uh, have been fixed by Chris just before the meeting. And I have now also configured the time zone. So it's now Central European summer time for us. And I hope it's also now correct for the rest of the world, but um, can't be too sure about that. On the on the calendar, it looks yes, correct on now. The Google calendar looks correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think there was no time zone set. Um, that's why we had some trouble when, when summertime, daylight saving time started. Okay, good. Um, then the agenda, uh, Carson, you proposed to move the CF deployment. No, um, the infrastructure pipeline, which sets up and tears down the long-lived bubble ENVs uh, mm -hmm. from the CF deployment project to the runtime CI project. Yeah, it's actually a move back technically. Um, when okay. we first, when this working group was first started, it existed in runtime CI, mm -hmm. yeah, under CI, um, and. Dave, I believe, told me that the logic there was that because it included the CATS uh, environment and other uh, environments not related to CFD, that mm -hmm. Runtime CI seemed a more logical place for it because it wasn't all like CF yeah. CFD related, um, which I, at the time I was like, fair enough, but I've already moved it. So whatever, we'll just leave it here. Um, and, but I'm getting with all the like recent bubble stuff, it's been kind of annoying to make like PRs to CFD to fix bubble okay. the mm -hmm. bubble environments, at least in my eyes. Like it would make more sense to just do our relin and PRs uh, because most of the most of the time, like we're going to be doing work in runtime CI when we are mm -hmm. fixing issues related to our like bubble or concourse or whatever, yeah. right? So I would rather have the like environment stuff closer to the 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 sorry the infrastructure pipeline closer to the environment stuff that it manages is is the only thing I was thinking there. Um, if yep. that makes sense to y'all, I think it's an easy just okay. copy paste Great over. Time. Yeah. Do you want to to just do it? Yeah, I can I can do that. Copy over. Okay. Good. Ah, hey Dave. Okay. Yeah, then let's come to our most complex and urgent <laughs> matter, the migration to Terraform 
146 uh, that came in as a surprise with the Bosch bootloader update. I mean, we have to be happy that there is some maintenance work in Bosch bootloader and uh, the, the, the Terraform version was really old and it was about time for an update. And actually, um, yeah, there, there hasn't changed too much in Terraform itself. It's just that some, uh, they turned a lot of warnings now into errors. Mm. Yeah, that mean if, means if you have an override file, it must really override something. And if you have a count index in one of your resources, you have to use an index to access those resources. So um, they're just getting a bit stricter and there yeah, we, we have to, to fix some, yeah, not so correctly uh, uh, formulated uh, resource definitions. Um, yeah, but nevertheless, you see, I've tried to collect everything, uh, all our issues here. So um, the good news is that no uh, update releases is green again. Um, so here we needed a clean bubble destroy of the four test environments and then bubble up worked again. Um, the only thing was or were those um, uh, this here, this GCP DNS stuff, this uses the G Cloud CLI. Um, for that, we had a special image, this one. And yeah, as you see, it has not been updated. Um, yeah, I've, I've rebuilt it locally. Um, it is, uh, let me show you, bootloader, uh, CI Docker file. It's the image built from this Docker file. Um, so I've built it locally, uploaded it to an up runtime deployments repository and um, changed this here in the manage GCP DNS task definition. So um, the, the infrastructure mm -hmm. pipeline is currently using this, this branch here. Um, but now just uh, today, they've published a new version of this image here to Cloud Foundry bubble deployment. So I think we can just make a final move to this image here and then, then we're fine. Yeah, makes sense. Oh, okay, so I can do this tomorrow. That should be should be really easy now. Um, and um, yeah, of course, everything was read here as new versions came in, and we've retriggered. We've kept retriggering until uh, everything was green again. Um, uh, so that one is fine. Um, now, the more complicated stuff, um, the other environments have all been destroyed and set up again. That, yeah, with a little bit of uh, fixing our own Terraform files, like uh, removing override suffixes where there was nothing to override, um, this worked. Um, the Bosch light environment, you have fixed that, Carson. It's still in a kind of yeah. It's the, I mean the it it the Bosch Lite GCP plan patch had an override file in it, mm -hmm. and yeah. we were pulling that override file every time in mm -hmm. our in CI, um, yeah. which was like the right move at the time. But now that override files actually need to override something. Mm -hmm. That override file, which declares all net new stuff, cannot can no longer be an override file, or else mm -hmm. Terraform fails. So I mm -hmm. made a PR to rewrite the uh, override file to a non-override file mm -hmm. um, in Bubble, and um, since I didn't mm -hmm. want to like copy the file to our thing, because eventually we will want to just keep copying that plan patch. Mm -hmm. um, I just set up a snowflake environment with my edited file and paused mm -hmm. all the recreate jobs 
and commented out some of the recreate stuff. Mm -hmm. So once a new bubble is released with that fix, um, we can go uncomment and unpause the recreate stuff for Bosch Lite. Um, until then, it basically is just going to maintain uh, the same, like the Bosch director throughout okay. each CFD run. Um, yes, okay. which should be fine, I think. Yeah, the the only concern I have there is historically we had problems with uh, Google rate limiting our Bosch Lite VMs. Mm -hmm. And so recreating there was a way to get around that because we'd run a set of tests and then tear everything down to stand up a new one and so that we'd have new new quotas. Um, depending on how long this lasts, having a single long-lived VM might mean we run into problems there. I don't know. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Yeah, it's been failing intermittently, which might be related to that or might not. It's been sort of yeah. unclear to me. Um, if you look at the Bosch Lite deploy, it pretty much fails every other run. Interesting. <laughs> um, okay. Which is weird. It's like, it's it's really strange. It's like, um, yeah, see, it's like almost every other run since I yeah. pushed, the, pushed yeah. the fix. The weird thing that I've noticed is that the failure, uh, the only difference between the two runs, as far as I can tell, is that once it succeeds, it's going to tear down uh, the CF the CFD um, deployment and then Bosch delete everything every release mm -hmm. or like stem cell or everything yes. that was uploaded. Yes. And after that deletion occurs, is when it fails every time. But if mm -hmm. we rerun it when it hasn't deleted okay. everything, it succeeds. So a little confusing, <laughs> like what what's going on there? Uh, yeah. It's like, uh, but um, I think it gets us, it's working, it seems to be working enough, at least every other run is fine to the point of like, we can get commits yeah. through this pipeline for now, as long as it stays this way, it's just kind of annoying. And hopefully Bubble releases yeah. that 9.0.1 pretty yeah. soon. The PR was merged, so as, as soon as they cut that release, yes, we can um, update our stuff. We, we do have a new Bubble release indeed with, with all the fixes that... Uh, oh, it's out? Have. Yeah, yep. yeah, there is 901. Okay. Um, Sweet, so, just today. Um, just today, <laughs> oh, uh, actually. Yeah, so um, oh. here it's, it's failing consistently with the cred hub job. Yeah, it's pretty weird, right? I like I, I can't figure you, it out. Have um, you looked into the logs? I, I haven't gone into the logs, um, yeah. so I haven't really tried that hard to figure it out. I've just been like, ah, okay. retry. I um, mean, they, they, they seem to be post-start scripts, which are probably like health checks. I would assume. So yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe. It could also fail for know. something else, but if it fails True. so consistently, we should be able to find a good error message. Mm -hmm. so maybe maybe we can wait on putting it back and I can actually check what the error message yeah. is first. Um, the uh, one other comment about the Bosch light stuff. Um, we do maintain a bubble config for snitch. And mm, we only yes. appear to do that because we ch we want to change the VM type for it, the Bosch yes. Lite VM type. Yeah, it's yes. E2 mm -hmm. standard 16. Mm -hmm. And I was a little surprised by that because I was like, oh, I thought, you know, Bosch deployment, I thought we changed all the bubble up stuff, all the bubble environment, uh, uh, like VM types a while back, or I thought Stevenson did that. Um, turns out he only did that for the defaults and Bosch Lite has like its own special case within Bosch deployment. So it's mm -hmm. still pulling an old N2 VM uh, mm -hmm. as its type. I was a little surprised that all of the changes that Stevenson made were on the bubble level and not on the Bosch deployment level. Bosch deployment is still on all the old VM types. Bubble is on the new VM types. The new ones. Huh. It's a little yeah. weird. Yeah, that and so any, yeah, any plan patch that pulls from a Bosch deployment that uses a Bosch deployment um, VM type is going to be it's on cool. the old machines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I might I might ask Stevenson about that, but it would be nice if we could either drop this file into Bubble as like another override for that plan patch, or mm -hmm. just make the change in Bosch deployment. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, that's fair. 
uh, so that's that's all. Um, that was the only thing I wanted to call out. Otherwise, the the snitch thing with yeah. just changing the override file seems to be working. Nice. Yes, this seems to work so far. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Uh, the, the, this was, yeah, um, so now luckily we, we have now a new release, yeah, awesome. 901, um, this was also automatically, uh, pushed to our CF deployment concourse tasks image and <clears throat> should now be used uh, everywhere we use bubble. So here now we have uh, all the fixes uh, from the from the last weeks. Is this yours? Yes, exactly. This is the plan patch fix. Um, good. So the state is now we have all our environments up and running, except for the only AWS environment. Mm -hmm. um, so I've uh, tried to bubble it up again this morning with the development version of Bosch bootloader, which contains the same as 901. And um, still we, we don't get really through. So um, I, I almost, by hacking around widely and uh, uh, fixing DNS stuff directly in the consoles, I managed it almost, I almost got it working, um, but um, the blob store credentials were missing somehow in Cretab. I don't know who mm. should spare those. So this is now the latest state. I've torn it down again, cleaned up everything. Um, luckily, Bubble has a nice um, command clean up leftovers mm -hmm. um, where you just specify your account credentials and the name of the environment. And then it really goes through the, the whole infrastructure provider and uh, uh, eliminates all orphaned resources. This is very nice. Um, this, you can use a bubble clean up leftovers if a correct bubble destroy is not possible for whatever reason. Um, so that helped. Now, um, setting it up again, um, uh, then you get a few errors in here in this area where the AWS Route 53 resources are defined. So here's again this stuff with, uh, there's a counter oh, set. interesting. Yeah, but no count index. Here you see this has been converted to to list, but here are still some outdated list functions, which will not work. And um, yeah, um, a, a few items. Yeah, here in this area, there is still, there's still some bugs. Um, so we have not specified a parent zone. I don't know what exactly this should be in our setup. And uh, then... so I, yeah, I, I think this part of the the set of templates is if you want it to manage your DNS for you. Yeah. So in terms of actually wiring in the DNS for the load balancer into yes. the parent domain. Yeah. So I don't know if we make use of that or not. Um, we do DNS. Okay. And we also did, we have one hosted zone here with, uh, yeah, well, all the typical records okay. for accessing the load balancer. Um, the challenge is here um, that our root hosted zone is managed in the GPS, uh, a, a GCP account. So you have to transfer. Right one time the name servers over to the gcp account i i've added a documentation to the experimental env how to do this 
so this is all fine. It worked like this before. It's it's just uh, that here some yeah some smaller bugs. If parent zone is empty, then we do not have this data thingy, and then it complains that we can't access it uh, it uh, here. Um, yeah. So yeah. When, yeah, I would have expected yes that to all be disabled if that were the case, but I guess that wasn't tested. Well, yes, for once, <laughs> this was obviously not tested. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I tried to hack it until it almost worked, but still got got some mm -hmm. more Terraform errors. So um, we could... Uh, we'll have to open another issue at Bosch Bootloader, describing that in this area there are some fixes necessary. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, it looks and, like it should be handling it, but yes. And the less complicated problem is here. When we use an external S3 blob store, you see they're using override, which will not work. And also this here is outdated. But for this, we already have um, a working, or oh, yeah, almost working solution uh, created. No. Where is this coming? Uh, okay, good. Yeah, seems I'm. Yeah, I, I'm. I've renamed this several times <laughs> over the last days. Okay. Um. So you have to remove the override suffix. This mm -hmm. would be the new user policy templating thing. It looks a bit ugly, but it works. Um, it doesn't use any outdated uh, resources, and uh, for outputs, it wants to have a sensitive here for the key. So this should be fine, and I could create a pull request. Uh, for Bosch bootloader, so that at least uh, this here gets fixed. This should then be the easy part. Um, I will do that tomorrow. Um, just here, I'm not really sure um, if anyone has sufficient knowledge to fix this. Yeah, I can take a look. And see, I mean, I might have time tomorrow. If you can take a look and make a proposal, that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, first thing would maybe better understanding of this parent zone. I don't think we need it. Um, and if this is empty, then trying to get the, get this here working somehow so that it produces a meaningful output. Mm -hmm. How okay. at at what point do we say that this is taking too much time and we we maybe just try and like remove it from the CFD pipeline temporarily in order to cut releases? Yeah, well, this point uh, will come probably soon. I mean, I would really like to have. A validation running on our only AWS environment um, to to find problems, in particular because now, um, yeah, you see, this is the CF deployment develop branch. So this has now accumulated all these changes over the last um, mm -hmm. days. Uh, uh, so. Um, would be nice if we get it running, validated at least one time on our AWS environment. Um, but yes, um, if we don't get it up and running, then yeah, we might really have to skip it, yeah. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, so um, I, I tried to deploy the, the AWS environment manually with a locally built bubble. I, I got the DNS stuff running with a little bit of hacking, uh, what was missing and I would, which also I couldn't really explain is that uh, some of the blob store outputs were not present in the Bosch scrat hub. And um, hmm. then what happened was, um, was this, here it tries to do a Bosch deploy, everything as usual. And then, and then you get lots of um, these error messages. Uh, yeah, it does not find certain um, keys in, and also not the region in CredHub. Don't know who is supposed to uh, fill CredHub with those credentials. It should come from the Bosch director, shouldn't it? That's that's a weird one because that might not be a Terraform incompatibility. It might be Bubble not putting the right Terraform files together or in a way that doesn't work somehow. Because Bubble's the one that pipes those files mm -hmm. all together into one thing. You you yes. could look at the output of the final Terraform files maybe and and see whether the those variables have been set and trace back from there, like why they didn't appear. I would assume mm -hmm. that the final terra put, terra, Terraform file output by Bubble would not contain those environments if they don't, if they aren't present in the Bosch director. So I expected somewhere to find a VAS file as Terraform output, and that should serve as input for the Bosch interpolate. Right. And these VARs didn't. But I did exist. not find this. Um, so here's a small gap. Huh. I mean, in the worst case, you could enter those manually and yeah. Weird. Yeah, this is a bit weird. Um, you said this, this was you building it manually, right? Or yes. are you confident that you built the, uh, uh, that you like brought in all the same plan patches and all the bubble config stuff in the same way as our pipeline does? <laughs> More or less, uh, okay. I have everything in in the AWS console that I expected. So the buckets, the load balancers, everything was there. And this lookup was working for resolving the stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, Bosch director was working. And uh, then just at this point for the final CF deployment, it said that several um, keys and uh, things are missing in CredHub. Uh, this was, mm. yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, okay, good. So. Next best thing is then, Dave, if you could try to analyze uh, uh, this stuff here a little bit more in detail and either open an issue or a pull request um, so that we get the DNS stuff fixed. I will make a pull request for the S3 blob store stuff. Um, yeah, and then we have to try again. Mm -hmm. um, to to finalize the setup. Yeah, I mean that you want you know the first thing I think. Yeah, we we can try ripping out that the parent zone since we don't use it and see if yeah. if that is causing confusion. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll add yeah. that to my list for tomorrow. Okay, good. But then we are um, quite close to um, to to getting our pipeline green again. I mean, everything else is running fine. It's really just uh, the experimental environment that uh, blocks things. Um, One. One other weird thing about this process that I wanted to call out 
was the network LB GCP plan patch that we were applying in most of our environments. Yes. The one that uh, the one that um, I ended up just ripping out of everywhere. Uh, the final conclusion that I got from the people after like finding the people who actually wrote that plan patch, tracking them down and, and pinging them was that they only made that plan patch to test new GCP functionality that had been added. And it wasn't strictly necessary for okay. any of like bubble environments to work. So I felt pretty okay with just ripping it out at that point. Um, it was uh, uh, their memory said like, oh, some shiny new network load balancer had come in and GCP, it wasn't available anywhere else. We wanted to like try it out. Uh, Cause at the time, apparently they, whatever work, I, I guess whatever open source work they were doing um, involved like pitching the best possible setup for CF deployment. They wanted to give mm -hmm. like, what best possible setup was. Um, I don't know how that translated from here's this plan patch to test this cool new feature to mm -hmm. that plan patch is now being used in all these CF deployment environments. Um, but I thought it was a good thing to remember that not everything we deploy in the pipeline is necessary to deploy in the pipeline. <laughs> some of the some of these things are like historical artifacts that don't actually need to be in there. Um, so I think okay. just a reminder to feel okay with I'm some just of it. searching this uh, uh, where was it? Uh, it had a good name. Network uh geez, what was it network LB yeah GCP? yeah this one yeah, yeah so uh, yeah yeah for the other one so um this plan patch was applied for most of or many of our gcp <laughs> environments mm -hmm. and it wasn't really clear what it's exactly doing mm -hmm. um and uh yeah it turned out we, we don't need this anymore this is an alternative mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. load balancer set up uh, but the default load balancer set up is is working fine mm -hmm. for our gcp environments yeah so luckily we could just remove that and uh, um yeah get the gcp environments working again okay good Okay, then, yeah, let's try to get the AWS uh, environment running. And yeah, if we really, I mean, if we don't get it running until the next working group meeting. Yeah, okay, then it's, uh, then we really have to skip it. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Any other business for today? No, I guess once um, <clears throat> uh, the pipeline is working again and we have cut a release, we would then probably continue with uh, removing C of Linux FS3. Mm -hmm. And the PR is open, but uh, yes. yeah, let's first have a new release and then <laughs> do the more destructive work. PR yeah, is uh, open, yeah. Florian is working on that. Um, I added a few comments that, uh, yeah, well, it seems he has not updated the pull request yet. Okay, but of course, this is also quite a big, uh, a little bit a bigger change than anticipated. Um, so removing everything that has to do with F FS3 and uh, moving it to an uh, ops file. If anyone wants still, yeah, this this would be the new ops file. If anyone still wants to use or has to use FS3, yeah, of course, for now, it doesn't make sense uh, to, to bring this in. Uh, we'll do this then after the next regular release. Mm. Yeah. One other thing. Um... Yes. <clears throat> It's not related to this. Uh, the I don't know if uh, like folks have noticed yet, but the sec security folks from CFF reached out and asked me to update release notes on CFD to denote a 
routing release CVE that hasn't been released yet. Um, I'm not yes. like, I don't have a ton of details, nor am I allowed to talk about it too um, much, I guess, but just wanted to call out that I did update the release notes to specify um, that yes. most of the latest versions are affected by a CVE. There is, yeah, but Patrick also already has informed me um, cool. since version 2.6.2, um, there is a problem that applications uh, are not uh, um, um, uh, registered as healthy anymore or something, and then the route is uh, unregistered. Uh, so we have to update to... 266. Mm -hmm. 266, right. Mm -hmm. um, but as this, this should already... It's it's in develop, yeah. It's in develop already. Okay, so we uh, as soon as we can cut a release, this is in and uh, uh, yeah, then this should be fine. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay, good. Then I will update the yeah meeting notes tomorrow, and then let's try to focus on our last bubble environment. And yeah, then we are ready to run again. Okay, thanks everyone for attending. Have a nice day or a nice evening, and see you soon. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. 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 Bye, everyone.